Hey, what's going on guys? Krosama. So right now I'm actually in a hotel over in Okinawa, Japan. So the lighting and the backdrop and maybe some of the background noise from the air conditioner is going to get in the way, but I still wanted to make some content because I really want to start this year off right. And one of the kits I'm actually going to be building that's brand new, which I don't really do too often. I don't really do a lot of brand new kit reviews, so this is unique. And honestly, this is a kit that I'm not really like too into, but I still want to take a look at it. And this is the Gundam Perfect Strike Freedom Rouge from the Gundam Build Metaverse. And I picked this up for about 2,500 yen, so roughly about 20 bucks. Now to talk about the front real quick, it's honestly not that bad. I really wasn't into the Perfect Strike Freedom when it first got announced, but for the Rouge, I think it's not too bad looking just because I like the Strike Rouge in general. And now looking on the side, you just see the Super Schwartz Guar words that I'm not really pronouncing very well, but you also just are going to have a bunch of different functionality with the sword slash gun. You got the different funnels, the little dragoons. It looks great. Honestly, it looks like it's going to have a lot of versatility when it comes to how you're going to pose it, the different weapons that it's going to have. I, I mean, it looks fine pretty much for a, you know, build metaverse kit. And here's just a better front and rear shot of it. So for the first runner we're going to look over is going to be the one that's actually to the Infinite Justice. So this is just pretty much effect parts that's going to be used for this kit. Here we're going to have the Perfect Strike Freedom parts, so it's just obviously recolored. And we're going to have these two runners that are once again the Perfect Strike Freedom. Some polycaps. And now the rest of the runners, these are all going to be taken from the Strike Freedom, so... Yeah, just recolored runners and likely we're not going to be using every single one of these parts. Some of these are going to be omitted and, you know, just overall not used. And we also have a very small sticker sheet, but I'm guessing that you are going to still have to do a little bit of color correction on certain parts. And lastly, we have the manual and it's just going to be your basic set of instructions. And here we have the finished build. So I'm not gonna go too crazy in depth with the articulation and a lot of details because once again, this is just the same thing as before. This is the Perfect Strike Freedom, just a recolor. So you've probably already seen reviews of that previous kit and don't really need like an in-depth explanation of the details. Now real quick for the articulation, it's just the same as the Strike Freedom because all the joints are pretty much carried over. So you know it's going to be really good and it honestly has no issues whatsoever. Now much like the standard Perfect Strike Freedom, you are going to have a lot of parts left over. So if you do want to use some armor bits and just kind of like make your own thing and you're even going to have a couple of effect parts, you can definitely take these. You'll have beam sabers if you want to use them on other kits. That's completely fine. Or if you want to take some of these uh, polycap pieces, Put them separately just in case the ones on other kids break. It's always good to have backups. Now outside the accessory holding hands, you are going to also have these open expressive hands. Now going over weapons, you are going to have the combo weapon pod on the right shoulder. And on the left shoulder, you're going to have the rocket anchor, which basically just shoots it out and you can go ahead and grapple enemies. And for the left arm, you are also going to have a beam shield that can be attached to the gauntlet. Now if you take this gauntlet and then you just swing it around and place it right back on here, then attach this beam effect part into this slot, you'll have this beam blade called the Light Fang, which, eh, it's okay. And then on the right arm, you're going to have this little unit called the Stun Unit Indra. It, it's just whatever, I, I don't know, I find it quite foolish to be honest. Now the first main held weapon is going to be the Anti-Ship Blade. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's just two pieces that come together so it's not a lot going on you'd have to uh, do a lot of painting in order to do some color separation which that's pretty much all i'm going to be doing but eh, it looks okay design wise and there's the beam effect part that you can go ahead and attach to it and this is called the hyper impulse gun it's okay it's just two black pieces that are sandwiched together with this little pink scope in the middle it's it's fine for what it is i don't think it really stands out that much and to be honest it has a little bit of a goofy quality to it. But these two weapons have a nice little gimmick that they combine. So let's go ahead and check out those two modes. Now for the gimmick, it basically combines the two weapons and it's going to have a blade mode. So it is going to be gripped here and you're going to have one effect part on each side. This is called the Super Schwartz Jurer. 
And I definitely appreciate it if y'all go into the comment section below and let me know how bad I butchered that pronunciation. Now this actually looks really good. I love the combination. I love the double beam effects, but it doesn't really function that well. You kind of like really have to work with the kid and sometimes against the kid in order to get it into a halfway decent pose. So not really like my go-to favorite pose that you're seeing right here. Uh, I probably have something just on the like a, a one-handed grasping pose. But yeah, I mean you can definitely try it out, but it's so far I probably prefer to have it separated. And if you flip it horizontal, take away the beam effect parts, you're going to get a like hyper cannon of sorts. So it's called the Super Agni. Uh, it's it's okay. And here's what I know y'all been waiting for. It is the backpack. Very reminiscent to the Ale Strike, which I'm pretty sure that's, you know, the builder in this universe j probably got like most of their parts from that Ale Strike uh, backpack. And it looks really good. Honestly, I love the aesthetics of it. Uh, the articulation is very, very little. This is just going to go up and down. And this is going to be on a ball joint. So not really too much going on. But honestly, when you get these at an angle, this looks so much better than this. Like I've seen majority of posts just have it like this. Uh, but you can also put it up and down and kind of like swing, you know, swing them around however you really want. But honestly, like having it kind of like at an angle, this is how it should be displayed. Now the backpack is going to have these weapons. It is going to be essentially rail guns. So you're just going to twist them around and pull down this vent, and bam you now have some rail guns deployed. Now something to note is that you do actually get a stand adapter so you can just pretty much plug it in underneath the backpack and you can plug it into one of those much larger Bandai stands but here I'm just using one of these like a uh, Act Nation stands so these already have a uh, peg and I don't really need to use this. And lastly all the Dragoons can actually be taken off the backpack but it's going to be pretty barren and doesn't really look that good because obviously all these exposed areas, you know, show the connection pieces to the Dragoon. So I don't think it looks that great, especially just being like one really big black block. Uh, the pink here looks decent to kind of break up the color, but you're really going to need all these pink Dragoons to you know, really sell the backpack. Now it's not to say this wouldn't look good if all these are deployed. I think it actually would look pretty good, or at least maybe half of them uh, being deployed. And if you put these on like little uh, effect stands that have effect parts, and you put little effect parts at the tip of these, I mean, it's actually going to look pretty good because they're still you know relatively close to the backpack and still kind of like incorporating that pink color to the backpack. Also forgot to mention, you can store the weapons on the bottom part of the backpack. And it's okay. So if you really want to have just some other weapons in the hands that, you know, you're doing your own little custom or something like that, or maybe even some beam sabers that are left over in the kit, yeah, you can go ahead and just store these right here. And it doesn't really look out of place. It, it looks fine because the overall suit is fairly edgy in certain ways. So this really just adds to it. All right, so for my final thoughts on this kit, look, I was not a believer. I really did not like the original version of this. It was possibly the colors, that's what I'm really drawing it down to, but a lot of the promotional pictures, I don't think really sold me on this. It didn't really feel like it was dynamic and it really had like just the presence. With this though, now that I'm seeing it, for, you know, like face to face, I built it, I really like got to play with it and put in different poses. I absolutely love this kit and it, it really helps that the colors I think are phenomenal. It has a little bit more cohesiveness. I feel like nothing's really clashing on this kit. Whereas like the blues and whites and reds, I, I felt clashed way too much on the original release. But this one, this is just perfect. I love it. Um, I definitely have ideas of how I want to go ahead and paint this. I'm probably going to have like the Dragoons deployed just to give it a little bit more of like a shelf presence. Because as is, it, it's definitely large and it has shelf presence as is. But having like the dra Dragoons uh, pose and like on a really nice, uh, not a diorama, but on a better stand that may be painted. And then having like all the effect parts and everything around it. Maybe some explosion effects around it with the, the beams coming out of the Dragoons. I think it's gonna look great. So 
I'm looking forward to painting this in the future. Don't know when that actually is going to be, but hey, this is something I can go ahead and just throw it right back in the box. And you know, whenever I get around to wanting to paint it, I can pull it out, disassemble, you know, sand it down, do all the, uh, you know, the fixing I need to do, and then paint away. Other than that, guys, that's it. I honestly recommend copying this. This is 100% a cop if you can afford it, if you like it first and foremost. But if you can afford it, it's like a 2,600 yen. So I want to say the aftermarket is going to be about 25 bucks, give or take. Maybe somewhere is up to $30, depending on the uh, accessibility and stock of it. But yeah, if you can go ahead and find it, I highly recommend it. I think it looks great. Other than that, guys, uh, let me know what you think of this kit down in the description below. And even let me know what kits you would like to see me review in the future. Especially this is 2024. I want to kind of get into this a little bit more open with y'all. And whatever you recommend, I will definitely uh, you know listen to it and move forward with that throughout the channel. But other than that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.